Welcome to the lesson from the Sunday School Textbook of Jerusalem Division, Class 10 Part 2, Unit 8 on Good Habits, Chapter 19, The Significance of Counseling. Words to be memorized, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands, Proverbs Chapter 3 Verse 1. In this lesson, we will learn about counseling and its significance. We will learn about why we need to approach a counselor and which kind of counselors are beneficial for us as Christians. We do not come across an exact word or term for counseling in the Malayalam Bible. In the English Bible we see the word counselor on various occasions. We use the term in the sense of counselor. Words like paraclete and counselor are often found in the description of the Holy Spirit. It reveals things beyond human intellect to us. God makes use of man as a means to reveal his answers. In olden days the elders in the family, priests and teachers functioned as good counselors. Proverbs of Solomon, the wise, are spiritual instructions on how to lead a good life. What is counseling? Modern counseling has developed out of the branch of knowledge called psychology. Modern counseling is founded on two aspects. It conjoins with the ability of the counselor to evaluate the problems as well as the ability of the individuals to take responsible decisions on their own. This process can be compared to looking into a mirror. We can't look at our own face directly. But when we look into a mirror, we can see our face and find out how it looks like. We can rectify the faults of our face from the images we see, so also by sharing our mind with those who know how to analyze various aspects of our mind. Counseling is the act of sharing our mind with those who know how to analyze various aspects of our mind. A counselor functions as the mirror of our mind. A counselor will point out the mental disposition which an individual cannot see on his own. Counseling thus helps people to identify their problems. Counseling is the act of sharing our mind, which provides us with insights in order to take our own decisions to solve our problems. Seward Huckner, a psychologist, defines counseling as helping others to help themselves. Early forms of counseling. The ability to impart good advice to lead the young generation in the right path is considered the early form of counseling. In olden days the elders in the family, priests and teachers functioned as good counselors. In the society wise men, parents, teachers, priests, ascetics and celibate elders give advice to those who approach them with problems. In joint families the younger generation would listen to the reprimand of the elders and they greatly benefited from them. In Indian mythology, instance of counseling can be seen in the Bhagavad Gita which was imparted by Lord Krishna to Arjuna who was hesitant to fight in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Philosophical principles of the West was that we should not interfere in the lives of others. Their principle was that instead of giving advice, the individual should be helped to take decision on their own. In the Holy Bible, we can see some fundamental principles of counseling used by Lord Jesus Christ in his interaction with the woman of Samaria, Zacchaeus and Nathaniel. We can see these features of counseling in the sacrament of holy confession. This sacrament not only contains remission of sins but also guidelines to overcome mental tensions and difficulties. There are different meanings associated with the word counseling, according to the situation, like it can mean, an interview attended by students seeking admission to professional courses. In the context of this chapter it means, personal advice given to mentally stressed people. Is counseling relevant in today's world? Counseling is often provided to finding remedies to difficulties and problems in normal life. The remedies we are familiar with might not be sufficient for us in certain situations. In those situations, a trained counselor's help will become useful. Hence it is advisable to seek a counselor's help in any situation in which we cannot find solutions on our own. This will also help us to avoid getting into psychological diseases and mental tensions. There is a mistaken notion about counseling, that it is only for mental patients. These patients might require counseling along with medication. No one should be branded as a mental patient for seeking a counselor's help. It is advisable to seek a counselor's help in any situation in which we fall and can't find solutions on our own. Counseling is required when people face mental tensions, and is often provided to find remedies to difficulties and problems in normal life. Next question to be addressed is, who all needs counseling? All people of all ages go through stress in life, school going students, teenagers, youth, at workplace, marriage, domestic problems, financial difficulties, mental depression, health issues, suicidal tendencies, old age, mortality, while going through grief. 
all people experiencing emotional and physical difficulties affecting their lives, but wanting to be stronger, happier and healthier need counseling. People with stress can share difficulties and feel relief. Good counseling will provide relief in all these instances and will help us to go forward in life. Psychology-centered counseling alone is not sufficient to encounter all problems. It would be better for believers to approach a pastoral or Christian counselor who has received his training in both psychology and theology. A counseling which integrates both technical and spiritual knowledge, instills spiritual thoughts and insights which make us men of God. We should seek counseling for solving problems at their beginning stage, without which these problems would grow into a big crisis for us. We need to provide counseling facilities in every Sunday school to help students suffering from mental stress, deviant behavior and emotional immaturity. Who should we approach for counseling? Modern secular counseling based only on psychological principles generally do not give importance to God and spirituality. Counseling which excludes God and spirituality is not good for the community of believers. If counselors have spiritual insight as well, their counseling will be more beneficial to believers. We should approach a pastoral counselor who has received his training in both psychology and theology. The major importance of going for Christian counseling is that it brings peace back to our life by enabling us live a Christian life that is based on set Christian values. The goal of Christian counseling is trying to solve issues using a Christian approach, trying to find answers based on biblical teachings. The counseling from Christian counselors enables one to become a godly person, walking in the path of light. Christian counseling gives Christians the courage of doing things and carrying out resolutions since they feel the decisions are Christian value guided as the base with Christ as the foundation. It make you feel closer to God as compared to other types of counseling. Please read the lesson in the textbook and try and answer the questions and do the activities given. In this chapter, we have learnt about the difference between secular counseling and Christian counseling. All people face mental and emotional problems. We need to seek good pastoral counseling which will help us to overcome these problems. Let us pray, O oh merciful God, we pray to you looking into the ocean of your tender mercy. We submit all those who suffer from distress and sorrow before you and pray for their sake. O oh Lord Jesus, great doctor, send your Holy Spirit and heal them. O oh Jesus Christ, don't abandon us or them in sins. Save us and heal us. Amen.